Are you trying to get into grad school? Are you applying in the near future? Well, good thing you found this video because in this episode, I'm guest starring on the Major Prep YouTube channel and we're talking all about that right now. Hey, 1% Nation, I'm Jake Voorhees and you're watching the 1% Engineer Show where we empower young engineers to rise to the top 1% of their career. If this is your first time to the channel, guys, make sure you subscribe because I release videos two times a week for engineering success. And if you want the 1% Engineer Kit and access to the Facebook group, follow the link in the description. And guys, if you're trying to get into grad school, comment below, let me know so I can give you some specific tips about what you can do this fall to make sure your applications our success. So this is a special video guys, it's actually a collaboration with my buddy Zach from Major Prep, who some of you know because he's in the Facebook group, that's further reason that you should be in that. Really quickly I'll tell you guys what Major Prep is, for those of you who are still trying to decide your major and are college students, he has a lot of great videos on these topics. A lot of this type of engineer versus that type of engineer and other types of professions that are not within engineering, but he is an engineer, which is why we built a relationship and how we found each other and why we're doing some collaborations. Zach has helped me so much since we met months ago and I reached out to him. I think his channel was below 20,000 subscribers and I had like just a few hundred and he's helped me out all along and he broke 2 million views on his YouTube channel lately, which is awesome. Congratulations, Zach, you rock. All the support to young people, college students, really trying to figure out their major everywhere, so thank you so much. But this video is all about what I did to get into grad school at UW-Madison. So let's not waste any more time about that, guys, and jump right into the video that I made for Zach. Enjoy! Before we get rolling, there's a type of person who has certain career goals, certain things they want to work on in their life that would be the right fit for grad school. We're not going to talk about that in this video, but if you have an affinity for research, deeper knowledge, you want to have an additional degree in comparison to all your peers, then maybe grad school is for you. And good thing for engineers and people in tech, science, physics, bio, most of the time you get your grad school paid for, so you don't even have to worry about that. Without further ado, guys, let's jump right into it. There's two paths to get into grad school, the traditional path and the way that I did. I'm going to go over the traditional one first to let you know what you should be doing, what you should be thinking about in university so that you're qualified for grad school. And then I'll give you the way that I got in, which is the way that you guys can too. To get into grad school, guys, it's super competitive. You need to have good grades. You should be getting at least a 3.5. You should score well enough on the GRE, which is the graduate requisite exam. It's like the SAT or the ACT for grad school, but you wanna get a pretty good score on that as well. So you need to be pretty sharp. You need to be pretty serious. It also helps to do undergraduate research in university university so that it just looks better. You're distinguishing yourself from other students and the professors that may be accepting you into their grad program believe that you already like research. You're a part of that ecosystem. You know what you're doing. So you're not going to freak out and quit. <laughs> It also doesn't hurt to further distinguish yourself from other students by getting lots of other experience, internships, by being a club president if you can, by volunteering, and just doing everything you can to be the top of your class, to be a 1% engineer is what I would call it. Because not only are you competing with all your peers in your country, you're competing with the world because programs take students from all over the place. And let me tell you, there are some super smart kids in this world. When I was in grad school, I always felt like I was the silliest person in the room. So you just want to stand out as much as possible. So that's the typical path guys, but when I got into grad school I did not have the best grades. I did not have the best GRE. In fact I actually applied and I didn't even take the test yet. It was 2008. I was graduating in the spring of 2009. The worst recession in the last 80 years since the 1930s. Such a bad time to be trying to get a job. So everyone was applying to grad school and it was even more competitive than normal. So all I did guys was I built better relationships with my professors. The professors in your university program are hands down the most powerful people that you will meet in your life to date and probably for a long time even after you graduate. But if these professors believe in you, if you build good relationships with them, you're staying after class, you're going to their office hours, they know you're ambitious, maybe you become a grader like I did, maybe you do undergraduate research like I did, and you just put yourself on the professor's radar and they trust you. And if you express interest in going to grad school and you have these good relationships with professors, what they will do is they will reach out to their Rolodex after knowing your interests and the type of program, the type of school that you wanna to go to, 
they will reach out and they will make sure that your resume gets put to the top of the pile and you pretty much jump the line because it's all about who you know, guys. It's not about what you know. It's always about who you know. And this is exactly what happened to me. I would have never even known this was a possibility unless it had literally happened to me. But I got into University of Wisconsin because I just know my name was put on the top of the list. I did not have much higher than a 3.0. I did not even have GRE scores when I applied. All the other schools that I applied to didn't even get back to me, but Wisconsin gave me a paid research assistantship. So you get the perks of being a grad student and you have a small salary and you have the master's experience and you have an advanced degree. So it's such a good thing for your career. And a lot of people like me never have the ability to add this to their resume if they didn't build awesome relationships with their professors. So that's my biggest advice to you guys out there who are in school right now and considering grad school, take professors to coffee, stay after class, get good grades, put in that time, show that face, stand out from the other students, ask them to lunch, and make sure you're putting in extra time with the professors who are in the field that you think you want to apply to for grad school, and you certainly won't regret it. At the very least, these professors are going to give you awesome letters of recommendation, which is going to go further, but chances are they will pull some strings for you, and you will get into programs that you otherwise would have had no chance of getting in if you didn't have these relationships. Comment below if you're considering grad school, and ask any questions, and I'll make sure I answer all of those. I hope you like that collab video. Video guys with major prep if you did consider subscribing because I release videos two times a week for engineering success check out another video guys maybe the nine study tips so that you can survive the rest of your fall semester and as always thanks for watching the 1% engineer show guys and stay hungry on your quest to become a 1% engineer cheers